After testing over 100 mesh chairs, I've learned a lot about what it takes to make a top tier mesh office chair. It's even a struggle for some of the biggest brands. This tier list will help you find the most comfortable mesh chair that will fit in your budget. Leading off the list is the new version of the all mesh Ergo Human. The redesign flattened out the seat and removed the need for a pad at the front edge. It's still a bit on the firm side as most mesh seats are, but I can comfortably sit in this chair for a long time. The biggest highlight though is that great flexible lumbar pad. It also has amazing arm pads. This Gen 2 is an A tier chair. The value proposition is where the Atlas really shines. Even if you ignore the price, this is still a really comfortable chair. I especially like the backrest with the built-in lumbar curve. If your price range is about $300, I don't think it's possible to get A-tier comfort, but the Atlas will be one of the highest comfort per dollar values. I give the Atlas a B. We call the Cosm the hammock chair because of the suspended feeling it gives you. You sink into this chair just the perfect amount without ever hitting any of the frame. My only downgrade is that the seat depth is very short for someone my height, and this tier list is my personal rankings. When purchased with the adjustable arms, this is a B-tier chair. The Clatina Millette is one of the chairs I've lowered my ranking on. This is because when compared to some of the newer chairs I've tested, I'm realizing the Millette isn't as comfortable in comparison. The headrest is great and the backrest is good overall, but the seat depth is way too short and leaves a big gap in the back. I'm dropping this down to a low C. The Ergo Chair Pro is the first chair on this list that I wouldn't recommend for anyone. I feel myself bottom out in the back of the seat pad almost immediately, and that's not even the worst problem. My back sinks through the backrest mesh so I can feel the hard frame. This is one of the most overrated chairs on the market. The Ergo chair lands in as D tier. There's so many great things to say about the Fern, but it's really the backrest that is the highlight for me. The chair has great flexibility all around. The seat is also comfortable even though it's a bit on the firm side. Next, the arms have great adjustability and pad cushioning. I would really prefer the knit backrest over the straight mesh, but either way, this is an A-tier chair. If you want to see how the Fern ranks against all of the top ergonomic chairs, click the link in the description for our full buying guide. The Tacova ergonomic chair is the $150 Amazon special. Your expectations shouldn't be super high, but here's what I think you should expect. A nice backrest, good for tall people, and a good headrest paired with it. The seat isn't super comfortable, and it's not going to be great for long hours. This is going to be another low C-tier chair for comfort. The OM Seating Yes Chair is a true sleeper office chair. It may lack the premium brand name, but it's a super comfortable chair with tons of adjustability. I really like the contoured padding of the seat and the nice wide backrest. It also features large, well-padded armrests. My one complaint is that it doesn't have a ton of flexibility. B tier. The best thing about the IKEA jar fillet is that you can go to your closest IKEA store and test the chair before you purchase it. I use the word before, but I don't believe you will be searching the lower level aisles to put this chair in your cart. The backrest is basically mesh wrapped around two bars, and the seat and arms are even worse. F tier chair. I recently did a full review of the Soji, and I concluded that it's one of the most well-rounded chairs in every aspect. It's a bit on the firm side when looking at the seat, back, and arm pads, but certainly not too firm that I would have an issue sitting in it for long hours. The only thing keeping it from a higher tier is it lacks some of the premium features of its higher priced siblings, B tier. The Secret Lab New has some real problems that puts this chair down in D tier. First off, the seat mesh is too loose so I feel myself sinking through it and hitting the hard frame. Now going to the backrest, the lumbar pad is very firm, and I personally like firm backrest support. This is just too firm. There are too many chairs similar to the new but with much better comfort. D tier. The standout feature of the new trawl chair is supposed to be the adjustable lumbar support, but in my opinion, it stands out in a bad way. It's simply too strong, even when dialed down as much as possible. The seat, on the other hand, is lacking when it comes to support. I find myself sinking too far down into the pad and bottoming out. I'll put this as a low C. Next up is a chair I absolutely love, the Human Scale Liberty. I have to start with the amazing pivoting backrest. It pushes the lower portion of the backrest perfectly into the lumbar curve of your back. Now pair that with a simple but supportive seat and this is a well-balanced chair. The simple design of the recline is smooth, and it hits the right balance of weight activation without needing adjustment. This one lands solidly in A tier. 
The Herman Miller Classic has lots of haters, but also many who are adamant that it's the best chair out there. Now I'm somewhere in the middle. In its time, it was the top of the line ergonomic chair with cutting edge features. But now 30 years later, the remastered version of the Aeron is where you'll find the super comfortable recline, lumbar support, and other great features. Sitting in a great condition classic in the correct size, you can still find C-tier comfort. The Hinomi H1 is full of gimmicky features, but ultimately it lacks in the important areas that make a chair comfortable. Probably the most important area is the seat, and this is the worst part about the Hinomi chair. The backrest mesh is too loose, so I find myself sinking into the hard frame. The large headrest is great though, and the lumbar support is nice, so I'll be generous and give this a high D. The update to the Eurotech IOO chair is now called the ErgoHuman Extreme, and it gives you very similar comfort to the Gen 2 ErgoHuman. This is a great thing. The flatter seat design keeps you well suspended and away from the frame. The backrest features the flexible lumbar support that moves with you as you move in the chair. Add in S-tier arm pads and a solid headrest, this is another A-tier chair. I was really hard on the last IKEA chair, the Jarve. Now the Marcus is a step up, but only by a little bit. The backrest is a little better as I don't feel the hard edges so quickly, but the seat is still very poor. I immediately feel myself bottom out through the thin seat pad, and the arms are also terrible with no adjustment and only a thin pad, D tier. The Steelcase thing sits in a bit of an odd position in the Steelcase lineup. The padded seat is supportive with a small amount of flexibility, and while the backrest is nothing to rave about, thankfully it doesn't have any of the frame issues you see in a lot of chairs. I would only recommend this chair if you are dead set on a mesh back chair and you appreciate the high-end looks of the thing, B tier. The Fujin Pro is one of the few gaming chairs I added to this list because nothing about this is really a gaming chair. It has a nice wide backrest with adjustable lumbar support. They also include a very comfortable three-way adjustable headrest and great armrests. The Fujin Pro has just one issue that keeps it from A tier. They didn't quite resolve the front edge of the seat, so I'll give this a B tier. If I were rating only the mesh portion of these chairs, the Zodi would likely fall in S tier. Our version of the chair has the digital knit backrest, which to me is still constituted as mesh. The backrest gives you just the right amount of suspended feeling, and it's nice and wide so you can move around in the chair. I would rate the seat as A tier as it's a bit on the firm side and armrests are also A tier. The sum of all these parts ends up as A tier comfort. Quick reminder, click the link in the description to get our full office chair buying guide. Expectations are high for a major brand, but the Herman Miller Varus is only slightly above average comfort. The backrest is supportive with no frame issues. The seat, even though it looks very thin, is comfortable with its flat, squared off design. This is a contender for the top chair in that $700 price range along with the Hayworth Soji. There's nothing I love about the chair, but it will still land in B tier. In my opinion, the Kalami Kirin is the most comfortable chair you can buy for under $300, and it's only $150. For me, the best part about it is the wide seat with good support. Like its more expensive brother, the Atlas, it also has a mesh backrest with a nice lumbar curve. Rounded out with some well padded arms and this is a B tier chair. My only concern is the build quality won't hold up for years of use like other chairs in this tier. Now moving on to another chair for almost the exact price, the Sihu M18 ergonomic chair. Even though this chair seems to get talked about more often and recommended, it's not even close to the comfort level of the Kirin. It's simply too hard all over, the back, the seat, and the arms. The worst part for me is the strong contour on the arms that force you into certain positions. D tier. Like the Liberty, the Diffrian Smart Chair has the amazing pivoting backrest, giving you great lumbar support. The mesh is also top quality with just the right amount of give for you to sink into it. It also has a great seat that while it seems very thin, it's supportive for long hours. The one issue that knocks it down from A to a B tier is my funny bone has the tendency to knock against the armrest assembly. The Hog Sofi is a beautiful chair with amazing build quality, but in the comfort department it has one big issue for me. My back always feels too wide for the backrest frame, so I feel like I'm locked into the middle of the chair and can't move around. 
the arms have really nice adjustment, and this adds some extra comfort as you can move them exactly where you want them. Because of this narrow backrest design, I'll give this a C. The Herman Miller Mira 2 features a tall and wide poly backrest. Just like mesh, poly material can be quite polarizing, but personally, I'm a big fan. The Mira 2 has one of the best mesh seats available, and it's the only one I can think of that has an adjustable front edge. The arms are a bit odd looking, but they're very well padded with a large adjustment range. This narrowly misses A tier. I'll go with a B plus. The Sidus T50 is truly a 50 footer, meaning it looks great from 50 feet, but once you sit down, it's a bit of a disappointment. Sitting in the chair, I can feel myself sink through the seat pad and hit the hard bottom at the back of the seat. The seat also has too much of a waterfall front edge. Now the backrest is decent, saving it from the lower tiers. This is a low C. If you're looking for a mesh back chair with a thick cushion seat, then the BTOD Akir is it. The thick cushion lets you sink in without the feeling of bottoming out. The backrest is wide and tall, so even tall users won't have an issue hitting the frame. Personally, I'm not a fan of big cush seats as I prefer the more firm seat for support. So the Akir chair only ranks as C tier. X Chair's aggressive marketing makes them a more well-known brand, but unfortunately, I find their X2 to be a very overrated chair at almost $900. The fact that I would rather sit in a Kalami Kirin for $150 says a lot. The mesh on the X2 is too loose, so you sink through the seat and hit the frame. I'll put this in F tier because I strongly recommend avoiding it. I was pleasantly surprised when I first sat down in the Hayworth Assure. Not that it felt amazing, but looking at the chair, my expectations were quite low. It is a small chair though, so for my size, I found the seat depth too short. Also, the top of the backrest frame hits my back when I'm reclining. Because of the sizing, it's going to be a low C. The backrest is definitely the standout feature of the Vera chair. It has great support and a built-in lumbar curve that will fit just about everyone. The seat is nicely padded, but also supportive enough for long sitting sessions. The Vera has a good amount of adjustability, including a seat slider to accommodate tall users. My one issue is I wish the arms would go a little bit lower. The Vera slots in as a solid B. The Herman Miller Lino is similar to the Hog Sofi from a few chairs back, with a narrow backrest that restricts movement in the chair. It has a small seat that I don't fit well in at 6 foot 2. If I fit better in this chair, it would likely be a B tier but for a tall user like myself, I can't go higher than C. The Carmen is the new all-mesh chair from Steelcase. Its backrest is one of my favorites of all chairs, with lots of flexibility and support. They also took on the challenge of making a comfortable mesh seat, choosing to add a pad under the mesh. They also gave the chair a flexible frame, unlike the Aeron chair. The backrest is an S, but the seat and arms pull the chair down to a low A. The human scale world is unlike their Liberty and Smart chairs in that it has a mesh seat. Unfortunately, I find the seat almost unsittable. I can easily bottom out if I sit down too hard. This is a big love-hate though, because while I hate the seat, I love the pivoting backrest. If I'm careful to not drop down in the seat too hard, I can be comfortable in the chair, but this issue makes it a low C. The hiking chair from Staples suffers from bad quality materials and poor design. The mesh stretches too far, so you bottom out right into the seat frame. The mesh is uncomfortable, and it's a very cheap feeling chair. With much better options in this price range, this is an F tier. Even though I love Hayworth's Fern and Zodi, the Vary is a different story. Once again, here's a chair with a backrest mesh that's too loose, making my back sink through and hit the hard frame. I also come into contact with the top of the frame at all times. The large and open seat is nice to accommodate different sitting positions, but it lacks any flexibility. C tier. Branch is a brand you'll see on many best office chair lists, but is that praise really warranted? The Task Chair is my favorite of their lineup, with a decent seat for the price range. The better aspect of the chair is the high and wide backrest that keeps the frame away from my shoulders. This won't land on any recommendation list of mine, but it's still a C-tier chair. The Herman Miller Aeron is the pinnacle of mesh office chairs. When compared to all of the other chairs on this list, the Aeron stands on top. This is thanks to the suspended feeling of the mesh seat and backrest. 
It gets another big boost by having the best recline in the industry. The Aeron also features the most cushioned arm pads of any chair and a very solid lumbar support system. I'd add the Mesh Atlas headrest to truly make this an S-tier all-mesh chair. If you're looking for a thick seat pad, the OM Seating Affirm is another good option. Even though it's not my preference, I can appreciate that it's a high quality seat with good support. The high backrest is great for tall people and the chair is packed with lots of adjustment. Add in some great arm pads and this chair ends up as a B. The Honda Ignition looks really similar to the Branch Task chair I just ranked, and it's also very similar comfort-wise. It's a good option for larger people with its good size seat and backrest. The backrest also features some flexibility, which is a nice surprise. An odd surprise is the sound the seat makes when you move around, which might be a deal breaker for you. This is going to be a low C tier. If you've realized that none of these mesh chairs are right for you, click the link in the description for our full office chair buying guide.